Hello everyone and welcome to this Let's Play of Eternal Darkness. This is the second time I am recording this, mostly because I forgot a very important part of the game. I will tell you as soon as we arrive to that, but first of all, let's watch the intro scene. So, some of you may be wondering, why am I making a Let's Play of Eternal Darkness? Well, I bet not all of you, but some of you are wondering that. Eternal Darkness is my third favorite video game of all time, and that's saying a lot, and not only that, it's my favorite GameCube game. I know, I know, some of you may be wondering, but that video game, this video game wasn't on your top 10 GameCube video game list. How come can it, can it be your favorite one? Well, I regret making that list despite being the video, the most popular video in my entire gallery. I don't think I was thinking straight when making that list. Um, I should have taken out the first Resident Evil, Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I don't regret the other choices. But I do regret those three. Well, anyways. Silicon Knights, most infamous for their previous video game, their new video game on the current console, Too Human. I don't know what they were thinking making Too Human, that video game sucks very hard. Uh, I'm sorry, that video game is bad. Uh, it doesn't deserve the, uh, defense. It's horrible. I don't know who will be in the, in the right mind to defend Too Human. Um, so, Eternal Darkness. I don't know if it's actually based on any of the HP Lovecraft Lovecraft novels. It will be interesting to see how much of the Cthulhu mythos has this video game. I haven't read any of the Lovecraft novels. I know, I know, I should have, but I, I don't have the time, people. I am doing a lot of things. I will try to read them when I find them and I get time to read them. So Eternal Darkness, the story of the end of the world, as we know it, <laughs> told by 12 different characters. I love the intro of the, movie, of the, of the video game. It's really cool. I, re I, I don't have much to say at this point, besides the fact that I actually love this video game for the fact that it's actually one of the most innovating horror video games ever made. If not the most, um, not just for the sanity effects, because uh, the other other video game, also based on the Cthulhu mythos, it was the Call of Cthulhu Dark, Dark Corners of the Earth for the PC and Xbox, actually have those Eternal Darkness and it is Requiem. But this game is completely original. And I love the fact that it's, it was actually made for the Nintendo GameCube and only for the Nintendo GameCube. So, um, let's get started. And... In order to see the secret ending of the game, you have to choose yes. You have to finish the game on the three difficulties that you have: Chaturga, Uljaoth, and Man and Salotat, which are the three gods of the video game. I already finished the game on Chaturga and Uljaoth, which are like hard and medium, respectively. And the only one I have left is Salotat, which is the easy mode. So let's get down to it. Flesh. I will try to make funny things to say funny stuff, but I don't know if I will be able to be to be that funny. I have to say I'm actually being inspired by the Spoonie experiment after his let's play he did of Phantasmagoria 2 and the let's play he's doing now of SWAT 4. Oh, so he's like Lester Burham. He's telling the story while he's dead. It is the story of humanity. Like Nintendo. Believe it or not, as you will. Your so Nintendo was an expert on horror video games. They had Resident Evil, they had Eternal Darkness, they had and Luigi's Mansion. The edge of extinction for two millennia. I want to see Luigi's Mansion made on the Wii. I bet it's going to be a very fun game. New play controls. New play controls my ass. That's for the people who never bought Pikmin when they first released it. Whether by fate or misfortune. My family has crossed their path, and they didn't take kindly to it. Their attention turns to my granddaughter, for she is the last... Consider this, uh, let's play, a kind of a walkthrough. 
of the entire video game. But I don't want you to be able to use it as a walkthrough. Also, it's not a speed run. I hate, hate the speed runs. They don't let you flavor the video game. Uh, I am one of those people who considers uh, video games a very important thing. Not the most important thing, of course, but you don't have to take the game and finish it in like uh, five hours because then you're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to have fun with it, and maybe you're going to forget it very quickly. A game should be enjoyed slowly, flavor it, taste it. For, for example, I, ha I started Okami on the Wii like three months ago, and I am not even halfway through it. Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. Three thirty-three a.m. in the morning. Half the number of the devil. Will that have any relevance? It's kind of creepy. Most times I wake up and it's that time, that hour. Wow. Alexandra Roybas, voice by voice actress Jennifer Hale. Jennifer Hale, who is famous for her roles of Samus Saran and the female Shepard in Mass Effect. I wonder if she, she was voicing somebody else in Metal Gear Solid the Twin Snakes but it's not Meryl. Meryl was voiced by Debbie Mae West. I think she was voicing either Naomi Campbell. What I say Naomi Campbell? That's the actor. No. Oh, Naomi... The, 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 the doctor. Oh my god. There you are. Yes. People are now laughing your asses off. Naomi Campbell I'm saying. No. Um, the doctor Naomi whatever or Sniper Wolf. She was one of those. Inspector Legras played by Robert Coltrane in this movie. This game started development for the Nintendo 64. Most like all all of major biggest Nintendo video games were made for like the previous console. Like Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye were made for the Super Nintendo. Ooh, that's a nice sight. I am not creeped out, I see this daily on CSI. I mean, this is usual stuff. So as I was saying, um, Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye were made for the Super Nintendo and Eternal Darkness was made for the Nintendo 64. And I think Super Mario Galaxy was being made for the Nintendo GameCube. I mean, what the hell, Nintendo? You always make the video game for your previous console? That's nice. It's my job, lady. You're the only living relative, and no, we can't check dental records. There's no way. Oh, none of this makes sense. No, I think it makes sense because, well, they wanted to get away from evidence and ways to identify the body. Oh, no, 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 wait. They had the ring left on the hand, so yeah, it makes no sense at all. And what's left doesn't say much. We don't want to sense it, do you? better find out. Yeah, I have to say, the models, they are very, very primordial. They are not very well developed. I know the graphics are not the best graphics the GameCube can pull out. I mean, we have Resident Evil 4. I think Resident Evil 4 is the pinnacle in graphics for the Nintendo GameCube. And Eternal Darkness doesn't scratch that. It's not that good. But, well, you have to understand something. There is a lot of elements in Eternal Darkness. And the video game always changes, changes depending on the difficulty you are picking. You cannot develop graphics that detail and pretend to have that. Well, okay, this is the first puzzle we have in the game. Approach the clock. I always have problems approaching the clock. I don't know what's wrong with it. So, uh, you have to put the hour that you had in your clock when you woke up. 3.33, half the number of the devil. In order to open that door, to Alex's grandfather's office. There is something I don't understand. To check items and open doors you have to press B, but to accept checking the items and pick the items you have to press A. I don't like that. There you are. I check it with a B, I open it with B, and now I have to read it with A. Many times I got confused and pressed B and then I cancelled the reading of the item. 